Hello friends, welcome to the cool Vedas, that's Veda school. In the last video, we saw how Yudhishthira too was convinced to let Bhima go to face the mighty Asura Vakasura. Today, let's get the details of the combat between Vakasura and the mighty Pandava Bhima. Now, this story has been mentioned in Vakavada Parva in Adi Parva. Let's listen along and find out what more happens between the combat of a human and an Asura. So, when the night had passed by, Bhimasena, taking with him the Rakshasa's food, set out for the place where the Asura lived. The mighty Bhima, after reaching the forest where Vakasura lived, he casually began to eat the Asura's food himself and called out the name of the Asura loudly. The Asura, seeing Bhima eating his food, and then calling out his name so casually, angrily came out and walked towards the human Bhima. Of huge body and great strength, of red eyes, red beard and red hair, he was terrible to behold. And the Asura walked, stopping the earth under his foot. The opening of his mouth was from year to year and his ears themselves were straight as arrows. Beholding Bhima eating his food, Vakka biting his lips and widening his eyes with astonishment and anger shouted at Bhima, Who is this fool eating my food in front of my eyes? Hearing these words, however, Bhima smiled in mockery and disregarding Vakasura's he continued eating with a smirk on his face. Beholding this, Vakasura uttered a frightful yell and with both arms upraised, he ran at Bhima, desiring to kill him then and there. Even then, disregarding Vaka and just turning back and giving him a look, Bhima continued to eat Vakasura's food. Flayed up with anger at this, Vakasura from behind struck with both his arms a heavy blow on the back of Bhima. But Bhima, though struck heavily by the mighty Asura, did not even bother to look up at him, at him but continued to eat as before. Then the mighty Vakasura tore up a tree and ran at Bhima for striking him again. Meanwhile, the mighty Pandava Bhima had casually eaten up the whole of the food that he had brought for Vakasura. And so now, washing himself, he stood cheerfully ready for a fight. Then Bhima, smiling in mockery, caught with his left hand the tree that was hurled at him by Vakasura. Seeing this, that mighty Asura then tearing up more trees, hurled them at Bhima. And the Pandava also hurled as many trees back at the Asura. Then, the combat with trees between the human and the Asura became so terrible that the region around soon became empty of trees. Then, Vaka, seeing that he was none other than a great Asura named Vaka sprang upon the Pandava and seized the mighty Bhima with his arms. Bhima responded by clasping Vakasura with his own mighty arms. He then dragged him violently on the ground. Being dragged by Bhima and dragging Bhima also, the Asura began to feel very, very tired. The earth began to tremble as a consequence of the strength that this human and the Asura exerted on her. And large trees that stood there broke into pieces. Then Bhima, sensing that the Asura was overcome with fatigue, pressed the cannibal down on the earth with his knees and began to strike him with great force. Then Placing one knee on the middle of the Rakshasa's back, Bhima seized his neck with his right hand and the cloth on his waist with his left hand. And then he bent him with double, with great force, bent the Asura with great force into two pieces. 
Then the cannibal roared frightfully and began to vomit blood. Then Waka, huge as a mountain, thus broken into two pieces on Bima's knees, died, uttering frightful yells. Terrified by these sounds, the relatives of that Asura came out with their attendants, frightened to the core they were. Bhima, seeing them so terrified, comforted them and made them promise to give up eating human flesh, saying, Do not ever again kill human beings. If you kill men, you will have to die just as Waka. Those Asuras hearing this from Bhima said, so be it, and gave the desired promise to the mighty Pandava. From that day on, the Rakshasas of that region were very peaceful towards mankind. And the inhabitants of that region began to live in peace without any fear. Then Bhima, dragging the lifeless Vakasura, placed him at one of the gates of the town and went away discreetly unseen by anyone. Some of the relatives of Vakasura seeing this became frightened and they all fled in different directions. Meanwhile Bhima, having slain the Rakshasa, returned to the Brahmana's abode and related to Yudhishthira all that had happened in detail. The next morning, as the inhabitants of the town came out, they saw the Rakshasa lying dead on the ground his huge body covered with blood. Beholding that terrible cannibal, huge as a mountain cliff, thus mangled and lying on the ground, the hair of the spectators stood erect. Returning to Ekachakra, they soon spread the news. Then the citizens by thousands accompanied by the wives, young and old, all began to come to the spot to see the lifeless Vakasura and they were all amazed at seeing that superhuman feat. Instantly, they began to pray to their gods. Then they began to calculate whose turn it had been the day before to carry food to the Rakshasa. And soon enough, they reached the Brahmana's home and asked him as to who did this to Vakasura. Thus asked by his townsmen repeatedly, the Brahmana, deciding to conceal the Pandava's identity, said these words. A certain high-souled Brahmana, skilled in mantra, saw me weeping with my family after I had been ordered to supply the Rakshasa's food. Asking me the cause for my grief and finding the distress the town was in, that best of Brahmana had gave me every assurance and with a smile had said, I shall carry the food for that wretched Rakshasa today. Do not fear for me. Saying this, he had taken food towards the forest to Waka. This deed which is so beneficial unto us has very certainly been done by that Brahmana. This was what the Brahmana who gave home to the Pandavas told his townsmen. Hearing this, the whole town was very glad and they all established a festival in which the worship of Brahmanas was the principal ceremony in remembrance of this Brahmana who had relieved them from their fears of Vakasura. And after this, the citizens returned to their respective homes and the Pandavas continued to dwell at Ekachakra as before. Now with this, we have completed Vakavada Parva and let's move on to the next Parva that is Chaitra Ratra Parva to know the next page in the Pandavas lives. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more Mahabharata stories. Do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you. Namaste.